Torah that I have chosen to present for Parashat Vayetze is drawn from Lukuti Sichot, volume 10. It focuses upon Rashi's commentary to Bereshit 29.32. The birth and naming of the first of the 12 Shafatim, the birth of Ruven. In Bereshit 29.32, we are informed that Vatahar Leah Vatelet Ben, uh, Leah conceives, becomes pregnant and ultimately gives birth to a son, and Vatikra, she, Leah, named him Reuven. As it was the case with most names recorded in the Tanakh, the name reflects a particular event or a particular set of circumstances. In this case, Kiamra, because she said, or in other words, the reason for naming the child Reuven was because Kiamra'a Hashem Ba'aniyi. Reuven has a connection to Reish Aleph Hay to see. With the birth of this child, God has taken notice, but Ani of my affliction. Leah is referring to a statement recorded in the Pasuk that precedes Bereshit 29.32, that Vayar Hashem ki snua Leah. God took note of the fact that Leah was snua, a rather harsh judgmental description of the relationship between herself and her husband Yaakov and was therefore compensated with the birth of a child. The Pasuk then goes on to state, Ki ata, since now that I have produced a child, Yehevani Ishi, my husband, will now love me however one understands the biblical concept of love. Rashi comments upon the three words Vatikra Shma Ruvain that she, Leah, named the child Reuven, Rabbeinu Pirshu. Our rabbis, Chazal, have explained the following. Amra, she said, Reu ma ben b'ni le ben chami. Take note of the differences between my son, referring to Reuven, and my father-in-law's son, referring to Esav. Shemachar ha-bechora le-Yaakov. Esav, my brother-in-law, son of Yitzchak, transferred, sold, the responsibilities of birthright to his brother Yaakov, my husband. Whereas Vizer, this, referring to Reuven, lo machra Yosef, did not sell it, the birthright, to Yosef, the firstborn of Rachel, lo ir er alav, did not challenge his authority as the head of household, lo od shlo ir er alav, not only did he not challenge the authority of Yosef, he was the one who ultimately intended to save Yosef from the other brothers, intending to secretly remove him from the pit and surreptitiously send him back to Yaakov, away from the clutches of the other brothers. A cursory reading of the Rashi will reveal a number of problems. The focus of the Sicha is to firstly identify the problems and then hopefully reread the Rashi in a way that it is not in conflict with the narrative of the text.